This problem asks us to solve the absolute value inequality. Absolute value of 2x plus 7 is less than 5. To solve this inequality, we'll, we will first isolate the absolute value bars. In this problem, the absolute value bars are already isolated. So what we'll do is we will drop the absolute value bars and create two problems. Our first problem will be 2x plus 7 is less than 5. Our next problem will be 2x plus 7, and whenever we drop the absolute value bars, we have to consider going the other direction, negative 5, which will then flip our inequality symbol. So when we take the negative sign, we have to flip the inequality symbol. So in doing that, we get greater than negative 5. So we will solve each of these. This is... Um, going to first solve the one on the left. We're going to subtract 7 from each side. So 2x is less than negative 2. So x is less than negative 1. Once we divide both sides by that 2, that is in front of our x value. Now, next we want to solve the other inequality, again by subtracting 7 from each side. So 2x is greater than negative 12. Divide both sides by the 2, and when we do that, x is greater than negative 6. So we have two parts to our solution that we have to consider. One good way to look at it is to consider the graph. If we look at where 0 is on the number line, here's negative 1. Let me draw my number line again giving myself some more space. So let's say our zero is here. Okay, according to what we solved here on the left, x is supposed to be less than negative one. So since it is less than negative 1, it cannot actually be the number negative 1. It has to be smaller than, but it can be any number that it's very close to negative 1. So we wouldn't go straight to negative 2 because there are numbers in between negative 2 and negative 1. We can get very close to negative 1, but not actually include it. That is when we use the parentheses. So less than negative 1, we would go to the left with the parentheses. Same idea, so we would be shading to the left. Let's slow down until we get to the negative 6. So let's go back and look at this part of our solution. So we have x is greater than negative 6. Greater than negative 6 means we're going to be going from negative 6 to the positive numbers. But we cannot actually include negative 6 because numbers greater than negative 6 does not include the number negative 6. It can be very close. It can be any number in this direction but it cannot actually be the number negative 6. A parenthesis indicates that you've gotten very close to that number, but you don't actually include it. So that's what we'll do here. We'll do a parenthesis on the negative 6 and shade the numbers that go larger than. Okay, so this would be the picture of our graph where we've shaded in between here with parentheses on each side. That helps guide us into knowing how to write our interval notation. So our interval notation looks just like the graph that we have there where we start from negative 6 with a parentheses because we could get close but not actually use that number and we end at negative 1. Again, we could get very close to negative 1, but we could not actually use that number. So this would be our solution in interval notation. Now let's look at a very similar problem, but let's compare the difference in the problem. So in this problem we had 2x plus 7 is less than 5. Notice when we solved it that when we finished the problem, the inequality pointing into the absolute value bars gave us a solution that shaded into each other. Now we want to compare that to this next problem that we'll look at where we have the same numbers 2x plus 7 in absolute value, 
the same number five on the right hand side the thing that has changed is we're now looking at greater than five so before we considered less than five now we're considering greater than five let's see how that changes our solution so we'll solve this inequality in the same way that we did before we will take 2x plus 7 as it's written and claim that it's greater than 5. When we drop the absolute value bars, it, so dropping these bars, it causes us to have two problems to need to solve. So when we solve this one, 2x plus 7, we change our sign to negative 5, so we flip the inequality. We will again solve these two inequalities. So on the left-hand side, we'll subtract 7 from each side, just like we did before. So 2x is greater than negative 2. We'll divide each side by 2, just as we did before. So x is greater than negative 1. Again, on the right-hand side, we'll subtract 7 from each side. So 2x is less than negative 12. We'll divide both sides by 2. So x is less than negative 6. If you compare to the problem that we worked before, we have the numbers negative 1 and negative 6, but our inequalities are telling us our solution goes in a different direction. If we were to graph these two, we would state where our 0 is, and then we would count off. In the direction that we would be using in this example is negative 6. Our problem tells us that x has to be bigger than the number negative 1. It cannot equal the number negative 1. It doesn't have a line here that says that it equals it. It just says it's bigger than. Well, it cannot then in include the number negative 1. It has to be very close to it, but not actually on it. Again, that means use the parentheses. So we're going to be very close to it, but not actually on that number. So. The parentheses will draw on, on top of the number negative 1, but the parentheses indicates that it did not really include it. Now, the numbers greater than negative 1 go to the right, so we'll shade everything to the right of that parentheses that's on negative 1, including the arrow. Now, if we were to look at the second part of our answer, x is less than negative 6, then again, we would consider the numbers smaller than negative 6, the fact that it does not have the line underneath here that says it can equal negative 6 indicates that we'll use a parentheses. So we'll use a parentheses going to the number smaller than. That parentheses indicates that although the parentheses is on negative 6, you cannot actually use that number. You just get very, very close to that number on its left-hand side. Now what you'll notice here is that there's an empty space here in between that we have not shaded. This space is the set of numbers that we're not actually allowed to include in our answer. So when we write our answer in interval notation, we use a symbol called union to unite our two answers. So if we look at the left-hand side of our graph here, we can see that we are covering all numbers from negative infinity all the way up until we get to the number negative 6. But because there was no line underneath this inequality, we could not include that number negative 6. That's what our parentheses tells us. So when we write it in interval notation, we'll say that we came from negative infinity and we stop at negative 6. Again, there's a space here where we have numbers that are not being used. In that space, the way we indicate it in interval notation is the symbol for union. We're uniting our two answers. We'll pick back up on the second part of our answer. We started at negative 1. We did not include the negative 1 with the line underneath here that says we're equal to, so we used a parentheses. So that's what we'll do also in interval notation. Negative 1, comma, infinity. Again, using a parentheses indicates that you cannot actually include the number. You just get very close. So what that means is we will never be able to include our infinities. So our infinities will always have a parentheses. You will never use a bracket when you're talking about infinity. And this would be our solution in interval notation for this problem.
Let's look at a third example to help us understand the use of brackets versus parentheses. So this example is very similar to the one we looked at before, but in this case, what we're seeing is the one change in this problem as compared to the one before is that the problem before, all the same numbers are used, but in this case, it's greater than 5, whereas the problem we're about to look at is greater than or equal to 5. That is where we begin seeing the bracket be used. So let's look at solving this problem. We'll solve it in the same way we have before, but this time we have the or equal to to consider. So 2x plus 7 is greater than or equal to 5. We take the problem as it's seen for the first problem to work, and then we change the sign from a positive 5 to a negative 5 and flip the inequality. Okay, now let's solve each of these. We'll subtract 7 again the same way we've done in the past examples. So 2x is greater than or equal to negative 2. We divide both sides by 2, so x is greater than or equal to negative 1. 2x is less than or equal to negative 12. Divide both sides by 2, so x is less than or equal to negative 6. Again, we're seeing similar numbers as we're solving these, but we want to compare and see what happens with our parentheses and our brackets in a similar situation. So what we want to do again is give ourselves a visual in the form of a graph of how this would look so that we could write our interval notation and get a better understanding. So I'm going to have 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, and negative 6. And I could keep counting, but these are the main numbers that we'll see within our problem. All right, so our problem states that we got x is greater than or equal to negative 1. Here is where we have a change in our solution. This line right here under the inequality tells us that we actually can include the number negative 1. So not just get close to it, but actually start or stop on that number. So that's where we use a bracket. x is greater than or equal to negative 1 means the number is bigger than or equal to it. And let's see if I can, there we go, get my bracket on, right on that number. And then greater than or equal to means shade everything that's bigger than that number all the way through the arrow. Now, x is less than or equal to negative 6 means not only to get close to it, but the or equal to says include it. Again, that's where our bracket symbol comes in. So on negative 6, less than or equal to means the number smaller than, shading to the left. Everything to the left that's smaller than or equal to negative 6. We can use this now to write our answer in interval notation. So we come from negative infinity, we continue on to negative 6, including that number because of this line here. So we have negative infinity. Remember, negative infinity can never be contained with a bracket because you can only get close to negative infinity. You cannot exactly stop on that number. Then we go to negative 6. We actually end on the negative 6. We have that empty space of values that we are not including in our solution. In order to indicate that in interval notation, we use a union symbol. We pick back up at the number negative 1, including the number negative 1 with a bracket, and continuing on to positive infinity. Again, positive infinity always gets a parentheses because you cannot stop exactly on positive infinity. You can only get closer to it.